there she goes. How you doing, Sister Vicky? Doing better, huh? I'll get back on the subject on track here in a second. You know, it's amazing. Uh, Brother Steve last night on the broadcast let us know that the newsletter, just in the month of June, and the newsletter got out late in the month of June. I mean, very late, in the last part of the month of June. It was downloaded 3,979 times. That's just on one website. And we have two of them. Do you think I'm going to hear from those people? Nah, you ain't gonna hear from those people. Is that, that's, that is amazing though, isn't it? So it's a subject and a topic that is close in people's heart. But I'm of the um, mindset that even though we talk about all these things, and the only reason why I talk about it is because so many people out there are walking in confusion. And y'all is not the author of confusion. No, sir. Is that right? Okay. So again, we're gonna reinstitute an old custom. An old custom that, uh, that has been common amongst uh, the Hebrews. Which is, I'm not gonna, we're not going to do it the traditional way where we sit in church and we labor to find the scriptures. Um, now, I did post up the scriptures on the uh, website, uh, on the online church. And, I mean, how many of you exercise um, the spirit of the Bereans and actually went back and searched and found the scriptures that I was speaking about? You know, as opposed to going to the website, I made it available because we, we like convenience. But today, I'm not going to post these scriptures. I hope that you would go back and exercise like the Bereans to see if what I'm saying is so. So we won't be doing it the traditional way of opening up the Bible, reading the scriptures and stuff like that. The Bible says, and the Bereans were more noble than they in Thessalonica. And they went back and they searched the scriptures to see if the things that were said, if they were so or not. In other words, they gave them a lot of homework. Now, the deal is, notice, they were more noble than the people in Thessalonica. I want you to be more noble than the people in America. Because, you know, Americans are pretty lazy. That's an inherited spirit. And you can tell how interested you are in Yah if you actually went back and searched the scriptures for yourself. And if you didn't, you know you're not interested in it because you have too many other things you, that's more important than feeding your soul. I mean, after all, ain't that the sole reason why we're here? Because we don't want to be lied to. We don't want to be deceived. And the only way you're going to find it out is you have to know it for yourself. You have to go back. You have to search to see if what I'm saying is so. And if you don't do that, don't blame me if you believe wrong. Don't blame anybody for you ever receiving anything wrong when you refuse to do your own personal, independent research. Isn't that how we've lived our lives, though? We come to church, we sit here, and we... And we never did go back and, and see behind, search behind all things. See if what he was saying. If, is it really true? Is it so? I believe that there's a spiritual order in place. I think that the Holy Spirit is doing something just by allowing us to even to know that. I believe it's a test to see how much of Yah you want in your life and how interested you are in doing his work. See, we all come before him as his people, but we're not all his people. I'm wise enough to know to not think myself above or beyond anything that is written. And you should do the same thing. He did teach us. The Messiah did teach us. You let the wheat grow up among, you let the tares grow up among the wheat. You know what that's implying, right? That means in every field, there are tares that are sold among the wheat. Are y'all listening? And the tares look just like the wheat. You cannot tell them apart. They look exactly the same. So while we may have good intentions, that doesn't mean our intentions are right. You know, am I making any sense? So if you want to make sure that, that your name is written down and not just walk under a false assumption because we are charged to study, to show ourselves approved unto Yah, a workman that need not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. We're charged to do that. So I, I, I guess we're going to call this um, part two. We're going to continue on. And I told you I was going to talk a little bit different than what you're accustomed to about this Holy Spirit. Since I did that message on the Holy Spirit,
people from one end of the United States all the way to the next has been receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit right in their home. Is that not beautiful? Even amongst the home fellowships that we have, they have been receiving the Holy Spirit. Is that not a beautiful thing? That's what this is all about, for you to be equipped. I mean, after all, if he said you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come up on you, what if you don't have it? When you have power, you will speak about the power, you will talk about the power, and you will manifest the power because it's now your nature. So when we go places, when we go out to minister to the saints, we're looking to deliver people because that's what Jesus did. He said, the works that I do, ye shall do also. And greater works than these shall you do because I go unto the Father. He didn't just leave it just solely for him. He left it not only for the disciples that he was speaking to at that time, but as many as would follow him in this regeneration. So we look for people to get filled with the Holy Spirit. We look for people to, uh, to be healed, all that are oppressed of the devil. Hallelujah. We do. Uh, we look to do uh, all these good things nice and normal, you know, preachers and teachers, and we look to cast out devils. We do that because that's what disciples do. Now, I'm making sense. Okay, back on my first topic, is again, I've got a, a few ministers um, that, that, are, that they're watching. I'm glad that you're watching too, but I need for you to really, truly listen to me, not only them, but all of us. I need for you to listen to me today, okay? Uh, because believe it or not, there's a whole lot more people that listen to us that will let, us, let in on it. I mean, we're, we're averaging almost a thousand unique visitors every single day on the website. And to me, that's a lot of people. You understand what I mean? 50 people is a lot of people. I can't imagine Moses dealing with all the house of Israel. Man, that brother had to have some type of spiritual stamina to deal with that, that many people. And of course, we know how our people are too, don't we? Hallelujah. But I'm here to give you the truth and to tell you the truth. Um, I need all the ministers, every single one of you who've been called and ordained and, and all this other stuff. Remember, when you are called and ordained, you are called and ordained by the churches that you come from, not by him, by the churches you come from, because I don't know them. That means if you're listening to us now, you're going to have to actually meet our test and approval. We're going to try your spirit to see where you are, uh, because we've already been proven. We've already been tried, and we're still being proven, and we're still being tried. We know who we are, and all that, our works do follow our faith. Um, we've made um, big strides in this life. Not only myself, but the saints of the Most High, y'all that actually live it straightway. We've done what is very uncustomarily to do in this society, which is actually obey and follow the scriptures. We've actually um, finished our what you call life, and we sold everything that we had just so we could actually um, serve, be, be servants of the Most High, y'all. And because I am blessed by the Father above, I'm able to bless other people. I can't be a blessing until I am first blessed. Is that what he said, Abraham? Likewise, you cannot be a blessing to nobody until you are first blessed. And what's one of the best blessings you can give somebody here on this earth? Would it not be salvation? Especially, being, you know, receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit? I mean, we have so many religions and philosophies, they, they don't even make it a priority. For people to even to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And yet, in a renewed covenant, you can't even, even in the, in the, in the um, Tanakh, you can't even go past. It's all over the place. How did this Holy Spirit was promised for us to have. And yet, people are still content on being religious. But in order for this to work, um, there must be unity. The scripture says, uh, behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Did y'all hear that? In unity. The Apostle Saul goes on to say, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing. So when you come to me, I don't expect for you to have everything in order right off the bat. It's going to take some time. But you should be seeking what we know. And you should be doing what we know. Because, again, we've been tested, proven, and tried. And there's a reason why people, that, or the Most High has moved up on people's heart to come this way. Either they want to be saved, or they want to be healed, or they want to be delivered, or they want to keep the commandments. Now, I won't say this uncomfortable part right here, because most people are not used to this, but Pastor Dow don't care about your natural family. Not one bit. Spirit is thicker than blood. And I try my best to, to get people to understand this over and over again. That which is born of flesh is flesh. Who said that? 
That which is born of spirit is what? Spirit. Now, your fleshly bloodline, they was born out of your flesh. But if they're not born of the spirit, they don't belong to his kingdom. They're not his people. Do you understand that? Now, if your family just happened to be born of that spirit, welcome to the family. Because when we walk this earth, we walk according to the same fashions, the same mindset, the same attitude, and the same character, and the same ways of this world. Did we not? We were all, all citizens of the sinful race. Is that right? Now that we have received his Ruah and we are born again, now we are ambassadors to the kingdom of Yah. That means we now have a different representative. We, we have somebody that is superior, the one who created all things for every single one of us. Now we worship him and we serve him. Now what's amazing is, Yah saved you, he has not yet saved them. And then he puts the keys of this eternal life into your hands to speak to those people. And they can either receive or reject. If they reject, they do it at their own apparel. Because they have to receive the Father just like you have. They have to go through the same steps just like you did. And it's none of my business if the Most High accept you and reject them. You should be glad that he accepted you. I mean, I often ask the people the question over and over and over again. Is it okay if you're so concerned about the soul salvation of your family that you're willing to be in an emotional disturbance over it? Is it okay that y'all go ahead and damn you and save them? No, but I would really would love him to save both of us. Well, you need to pray for him then because the decision is ultimately up to him. He is the one that invites himself to come and knock at people's doors. And he don't go to everybody's door. And he doesn't love all mankind like everybody is, like you've been so duped and deceived in Christianity. He does not love everybody. He is only the Yah, the Most High of Israel, his people. And they just happen to be in this dispersion all across this earth. And he is only fond of his people. He gave you the keys to go and preach to the nations and to give them opportunity to either receive or reject. If they receive, blessed be the name of Jesus. Welcome to the kingdom. Now let's get on about our father's business. If they reject, then, well, hey, have a good time. Hell had to enlarge in itself. Now, those are just straightforward words. And a lot of people, they listen to me because they know that there's no shuck, no buck. I'm not trying to toy around or play with nobody. I just tell the truth straight like it is. And so, you're going to have to make a determination who is your, your king. Who do you serve? Because you can have Jacob and Esau born of the same father. And yet, Yah will accept one and he hates the other. You have Ishmael and you have Isaac, born of the same father, yet he receives one and rejects the other. I'm making sense. If you tell them this good news of this gospel and they reject it, you realize they are not rejecting you. They're rejecting him that sent you. It's just that it's easier for them to reject you because there's not a human being on earth that will stand before the father and, and just... Flat out reject him and curse him to his face if they could see him sitting on the throne. Knowing that their very soul is weighed in the balance. So since we're here on this earth, y'all remember the story, right? In the account, there was two men that died. A rich man and a poor man. Huh? One went to Abraham's bosom and the other one went to hell. Hmm? And of course the other one that went to hell, he was concerned about his family. And what he said was, hey, hey. Let me, or let Lazarus go back and, and tell them, let me go back, tell them about this horrible place that I'm in. Because they knowing all things, you know what they said, right? Hey, if one come back from the dead, they won't believe. But I will tell you this, let them hear the prophets. Let them hear the people that are still alive on this earth. Because you know what the answer is, right? Oh, they ain't going to hear them. Well, so be it. None of my business. Y'all see how the most ideals? Do y'all see how the most ideals? And that's why salvation is not a light thing. Not a light. It's a very, very serious thing. Very, very serious. Because we only pass by this life one time. 
and one time alone. One time and one time only. He that is filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is holy, let him be holy still. Are y'all listening? I don't understand. Hey, you would rejoice at these words if you knew what the scripture says because you'll know that I'm telling the truth. The man was so tormented in the flame, he said, I got another idea. huh? Just, just, just let this poor man dip his, just a finger into a cup of water and put it on my tongue. For I am tormented in this flame right here. Hey, can't do it. Great big gulf between us. Great big gulf. It, it, it's not even possible. In other words, once you die, after that, the judgment is set. And no matter your love, your hatred, it all perishes. So you better make sure that this life that you're living here on this earth, that it's not wasted in wantonness and vanity. Why? I mean, how many pastors do you actually know that actually come down and rebuke the people for not doing what they should be doing because the Ruah is dwelling in them? At least they say he's in them. What prevented you from going back and searching the scriptures to see if the message that I preached and taught last Shabbat was so? Not everyone, not everyone had your attitude. There's a lot of people that they, they themselves, they went back and they searched those scriptures and they spent a lot of time searching them. And because of that, they received the Ruah HaKadosh. They received the spirit that is holy. And we're getting a lot of last hour labors that's going to move a lot of you old dead weights out of the way because they're motivated. And they really, truly love the Father. There's a lot of people whose relationship has been rekindled with the Father. And they're on a literal fire like never been before, like never before. Religion couldn't do it for them. All these years of going to church couldn't do it for them. But only the spirit that is holy could do it for them. And they mean business. They're not about to miss out on this opportunity ever again. But the one thing that made the early assembly powerful was unity. The unity of the faith and the bond of the spirit. So it's very important that if you're going to be a part of this ministry. Now first, like I said, I'm going to move slow. At first I was moving fast, but I'm going to move a whole lot slow before I start promoting a brother uh, in this ministry. Because I want to make sure that you're doing the Father's will and not your own thing. Hallelujah. I mean, to do the Father's will, we know what you do. You'll get people filled with the Holy Spirit. You'll be making them, making sure they're doing well. You'll be casting out devils. You'll be healing the sick. You'll be cleansing the leper. You'll be raising dead. A lot of dead folks in America. That's, that's a bunch of folks walking around with two legs dead. Dead in their trespasses, dead in their sins. They need a lot of resurrecting. Hallelujah. You'll be doing all this because this is the work of the Father. Hallelujah. And the Holy Spirit would give you that. So if you come to us, you need to follow our lead. We've been doing this for a long time, and we ain't tired yet. Hallelujah. Now, I realize that a lot of people have their own ministries, and that's because those are the people who are lingering back, and, and they're, you know, learning all that they can so they can add it to their ministry. That's fine, because the word, we don't have a monopoly on it. It belongs to the Father. It is his word. Are you following me? It is his word. But if that's what he's leading you to do, that's fine. Because I have to read in order to understand the prophets. I have to read in order to understand the apostles in order to feed y'all sheep. So I have to learn it from somewhere myself. Hallelujah. Just make sure that you're not misusing his, his word, his ministry, his, 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 his. Keep saying his. For your own personal ambitions. And the people don't belong to you. They belong to Yah. You understand? You didn't die for them. You didn't give your life for them. The Most High did. They belong to the King. Does that make any sense? How much more plainer can you make this? But he does have an order. He has an order of things. Now, common sense would tell you if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Isn't that right? Hmm? Or you shouldn't try to reinvent the wheel. If you don't know about deliverance, then humble yourself. Sit down, talk, and learn so that you can help others. That's what this thing is about, right? After you have been converted, you are supposed to go and strengthen your brother. That's part of the conversion process. And tell me that America has a shortage of sin. I don't believe that one bit. It hasn't. As a matter of fact, it's become an epidemic on an unprecedented level. 
So, if you had your understanding open by the way that you're hearing here called what we call the straightway truth, uh, then that means that you are automatically submitting to my authority and my leadership as well as the elders here at this community. We're kind of like um, your Jerusalem council in this diaspora. Is that making any sense? We're kind of like the Jerusalem council in this diaspora. And of course, you can find all this in the book of Acts. Um, so that means it's my job to feed you with knowledge and understanding. If you notice, I don't come and ask you questions, you ask me questions. Is that making sense? You have to set an order of precedence because the, the mindset of America is something else. We don't mind going and getting an education as long as we can get to monetary gain, but we're not going to go and, and receive a spiritual education so we can be a benefit for Yah's kingdom to help out his sheep. Because there's a lot of time involved in this. You'll be uncomfortable. Look at the Apostle Saul's resume. Shipwrecked, beaten twice, left for dead, often in fastings, in perils, hungered. I mean, my God, you ain't never saw, saw myself and Sister Carol, the brother. You never saw us how we look immediately after um, doing a meeting. You never saw how we look after we get finished or when we come back. We barely able to get on the airplane. And we get back here, it takes us two days just for our body to recover from because of the spiritual draw and the warfare that is going on. That means there's going to be a lot of virtue going out. There's something seriously to be had here, brothers and sisters. This is a serious, and hey, when you met us, you met the real deal. Everybody else may pretend and be playing games, but we ain't playing games. One bit. Hallelujah. I have some faithful brethren that are scattered all across this diaspora and stuff that, that are very serious about doing the work. I mean, you look at Brother William. Brother William's getting it done. It's not Brother William getting it done. Brother William is getting it done. Brother William is getting it done on an unprecedented scale. Brother William is feeding Yashi. Every time you turn around, Brother William is at some place either baptizing or somebody's getting filled with the Holy Spirit or somebody's getting some devils cast out of them. Brother William. They all gather together at Brother William's house and they watch the Shabbat service every single Sabbath. They don't miss the word for nothing. They'll have plenty of the fellowship to do all the things that they need to do after that. But they watch the service. And that's what you should do. You should be watching the Shabbat service so that you can grow. Because you have a whole lot to learn. And a very short time to learn it in. And then after that, you can go ahead and do whatever you need to do. Um, but no matter if you're a pastor, an elder, a teacher, or a deacon. If the Father has led you to this place in his way, the way then the council, more than likely, is going to come from straightway. Um, it seems like that I've done pretty much made enemies with every single religion out there on this earth. Now, let me, in on a little, let me let you in on a little secret. I am for Yahweh and him alone. I don't support no other way but his way. And you should not support any other way but his way, and that's it. We've all been pawns for many people's chess games. And we haven't been upset enough to actually uh, become mad enough that we end up falling back into the same old mess again. That's why you see me now making the move um, really hard, very hard. Because when I really truly, you know, it's okay for us to have a microscope on Christianity. It's easy for us to do that since we've come out of it. But there's this, you ever notice there's this undertone of sentiment, don't ever say nothing about the Messianic movement or the Jews of today, the Jews of today? Well, I got a microscope on them too. And I'm finding out the same thing that has gone on in Christianity is going on over in this thing too. And people's hearts are being deceived. Left and right to become very religious while they're void of the power of Yah. They're void of it. And that's the reason why I preach and teach what I do with no apologies. And so make no mistake about it, my job while I'm here on this earth is to tap every false way and every false religion that I can and to pull as many people as, as the ears as I can and get them back to their father where they belong. Moses was not, was not Yah. Moses was a custodian of Yah's word. And that's all we are. 
And our job is to get people back to him. He is your salvation. He is the one that's going to save you. He's the one that's going to deliver you. And he has set up an order. He gave some apostles and the prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers. It's all for a reason, though. For, so that we can all come into the union of the faith. So that we can all be perfected. That's what it's for. That's what they are there for. And he calls these men gifts. You listen very closely. You'll hear what a man represents. But you must exercise a discerning spirit. You cannot listen with your cardinal here. And you have to listen spiritually. And in order to do that, you have to know what this word says. Because when every time a person opens up their mouth, their motivations, their intents, their lusts, their ambitions, their dreams are all revealed to the mind that is sober, that has exercised the ability to be able to hear. Again, Pastor Dallas, not, I'm not here to make you feel good. I'm not here to make you feel good. You'll feel good providing that you're obedient to the Holy Spirit. My job is to feed you with knowledge and understanding. It says right up here, and I will give you pastors according to my heart. Now, whose heart is that? Which shall feed you. Who's doing the feeding then? The pastors. That says pl pastors, plural. Which shall feed you with knowledge and understand. Now, whose knowledge is that? Is that a religion knowledge? Is that a certain people way? No, it's his knowledge. And that's the order and perspective of everything. Everything should be coming Directly from him. And he has given that to us through his holy apostles and prophets. And if, we, if you see any man that speaks anything other than what this book says, you know this, that there is no light in them at all. Zero. I don't care how dim it is or, or, or how small it is. They may even get your attention. But if they don't speak according to this word right here, that's because there is no light in them at all. And make no mistake about it, the Most High Yah. He'll back up his men. I promise you that. I promise you. He will confirm for you with signs following those who are believers. And they'll have the same signs as the Messiah had and not these lying signs and wonders. Gold dust falling off the ceiling. People clackling and cuckling like chickens and laughing like hyenas all over the place and crawling around on the floors like a snake and calling it the Holy Spirit. People are so hungry to see anything, what they call supernatural, that they'll grasp on anything and say, look what God has done, and then they'll misrepresent him, misrepresent his character, because they want Yah so much, but they don't want him so much to change their wicked heart and their wicked life. I can tell you that your life is wicked because I had to first see that my life was wicked in order for me to be able to show you how wicked your life is. Because the way that the Bible teaches before you are able to pluck the speck that is out of your brother's eye. You must first remove the beam that is in your own eye, and then you will be able to see clearly the moat that is in thy brother's eye. Is that not what it says? Hallelujah. I know a lot of people don't like this. I don't care what the flesh don't like. You shouldn't like the flesh either. Flesh and blood shall not inherit the kingdom of Yah. Now, you have to determine the words that I'm speaking. Am I speaking this on my own accord, or does this come from somebody greater? Hallelujah. So, if you're coming this way, know this. Uh, I hope you really mean business. Really, truly mean business, because we mean business, because we, we're already sold out. We're not looking. Um, there's nothing on this earth we're looking for. We've got everything we need with his Holy Spirit. We've got enough to keep us. And I hope that um, you're able, you're able to continue on in his work with us in his diaspora. And believe me, if he has means and modes for elevation or you to become part of us, we will know. Because we're not about to hold anybody back from doing y'all's will. But you will be tested, you will be proven, and you will be tried. I'm just not going to accept you because you have a nice, smiley, pearly yellows. Or you smell good or look good. I'm going to pay good attention to your life. I'm going to look at your character. I'm going to discern your heart and your spirit. Especially before you come up here and you speak to the precious saints of the Most High God. Who he has given his life for. That's where I deal with men. Hallelujah. But whosoever keepeth his word. 
In him verily is the love of Yah perfected hereby. We know that we are in him. And he that saith he abideth in him unto himself also walk even as he walks. So if you abide in him, your footprint and footsteps should be just like his. Especially men who are created in his image. Hallelujah. Reading it in context so we can understand what the scripture says. And he gave some apostles and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors, and some teachers. Listen to this. For the perfecting of the saints. That's implying if you're not an apostle, you're not a prophet, you're not an evangelist, you're not a pastor, you're not a teacher, you're not in a position to perfect anybody. Is that making sense? He gave. And he's the giver of every good gift. And every good gift comes from above. He gave. All right? Well, he says, Till we all come into the unity of the faith. Oh, I want to make sure I forget this. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body, till we all come into the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of Yah unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. So the ideal is all of us should be walking around with the same character and nature as the Messiah himself. That's what our perfection are. No, no, nobody ain't paying attention to you. Nobody ain't caring about you looking at you. Oh, yeah, hallelujah. We recognize you because we can see the temple that you are. But the whole idea is for us to all end up like him before the breath go out of our body. Is that right? That we henceforth. Now the whole purpose and reason of this perfection is, is so, you know all this confusion that we have nowadays where everybody was arguing and disputing over doctrine and theologies and philosophies, perspectives and ideas. You know, the reason why he gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, and teachers. So watch this. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. By the slight of men. And I think that's one of the biggest mistakes we make today is not assuming that there are people who have other ambitions in their hearts and minds. Some of us, all of us pretty much have set up on a lot of them. Hallelujah. And the cunning craftiness, look what it says, why by they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love. Speaking the truth how? In love. Hmm. Now, love, according to America, is we say everything with honey dripping off our lips. That's what they define love as. Of course, the way I define love is according to what the Bible defines love. And love always has to do with give. For Yah so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And that also includes a lot of pain. Hallelujah. It didn't say who's ever believe in me or believe in you. It said who ever believe in him <laughs> should not perish and have everlasting life. Is that all right? Glory to the king. But speaking the truth in love, and then believe it or not, my character and nature, what I'm exercising today, there's nothing new at all. You got faithful men like uh, Joshua and Josiah and, and um, David and, and uh, Peter and Paul. And this is nothing new at all. It's just, it was just that there were so few of the people that loved him enough to talk and represent him and speak for him because the flood of deception is always wider and is always prevalent and everybody clamors and and it is easy to flock to that because we we have a cattle mentality. We have a cow, I promise you. You Y'all watch it sometimes. When we have, uh, you know, these big meetings and stuff, just put four or five people sitting over in one area and stuff and watch and see how long it takes before that area is packed. Look at them looking at me. And most people just go around not even paying attention to human nature. We do that because we want to belong. Yes, we do. The sole reason why we're sitting here is because we want to belong. We want to be part of. Hallelujah. But you need to understand that belonging and part of is belonging and part of his kingdom. And his kingdom alone. Am I making any sense? Glory to the king. I hope, I hope that if you ever even practice hypocrisy that you finish with that mess. Because here we're not playing hypocrite. Look what he says. Speaking of truth and love, it may grow up in him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. 
from whom the whole body, look at this, fitly joined together and compacted. I've got many of you out there that live about an hour from somebody that's, that's close to fellowship and you won't even go over and fellowship with them. And the Most High, by His grace and mercy, has allowed us this outreach, this opportunity to give you um, Shabbat service to come into the comfort of your home to where you can get fed His Word. And you can go over and actually, you know, obey the commandment by not forsaking the fellowship of the assembly of the saints. You can go right over there and you can see either one of these saints scattered all across this land. There is a body somewhere close to your area. And if it ain't, you start it. If you're listening to me, you start it. Open up your home, make it available. And you can have a beautiful, wonderful fellowship of the saints. Now, why it is beautiful and wonderful for, self, you know, for saints to fellowship, you may have to correct somebody. That's called iron sharpening iron. You may have to reprove somebody. Don't get upset if you bring your unruly children acting like a bunch of batches and stuff because you go over somebody's house and they don't want you hanging off their custom cabinets that they put a, a smack on their rear end. Don't get upset. Because remember, y'all led you there. And you're going to tell me that y'all's a liar now? Oh, hallelujah. Don't get upset if they tell you, don't piss on my toilet seat. If you tinky, tweaky on my toilet seat, clean it off. Some things ain't just got to be told. It's called home training. Well, hold on. Let me back up. We live in America. And a lot of people don't have home training. You know, we, we've been so used to public facilities, there's always somebody that's going to clean up behind you. You see, you see what's going on, saints? Oh, yeah. Believe it or not, we need this kind of talk. Oh, okay. oh, yeah, make yourself at home, but don't make it your home. There's a difference between making yourself at home. Oh, hallelujah. That's right. hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Know how to behave. You can have a wonderful time. Yes. Glory to the king. Pastor Dye, why are you talking about all this stuff? Because we're Americans. I'm going to have to. Because I promise you, it would be a very uncomfortable situation when you go over to somebody else's house and you haven't trained your own house how to behave when they go to somebody else's house and you treat it like they do in your house. You know, because in your house, your children are permitted to swing from chandeliers. In your house, your children are permitted to throw stuff all over the floor and spill stuff and, and burn up everything. In your house, your children are, are allowed to play baseball, football, basketball, and everything else in the house. When you go to somebody else's house, you better learn how to behave because the bat may be hitting the ball. <laughs> and don't tell me that the Holy Spirit did not lead you there. Yeah, he led you there just for that correction. Why? So that we could be fitly joined together and compacted. <laughs> See, unless we talk like this, you would never know what that scripture means. <laughs> By that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working and the measure of every part maketh increase of a body until the edifying of itself in love. The whole idea is, is till we get all of us thinking on the same accord, same sheet of music. And only we can do that, that means there are certain things of our own self we have to just lay down. We got to put aside. Because we all have to end up thinking like him in order for this unity to take place. Now, when you get back to your house, when you get back to your home, you can resume life as normal. Hallelujah. Even the Bible even teaches that when you go to the house of Yah, you should already know how to behave. It does teach that. Hallelujah. All right. We're going to go ahead and start. I hope I made my point and got it over. Again, it's not, I'm not rejecting anybody. It's just that I'm very slow about adopting who you are. I don't have to worry about Pastor Johnson. I haven't seen him on three different occasions. I don't have to worry about Pastor Johnson. Oh, he, 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 he's right there in the fold. Pastor Johnson's like, you ever meet some people and it's just like they, they've been there all the time? What did I say to you the other day, Brother Jamie, when he was out there working? Yeah. 
You know, I said, Brother Jamie, he only been here a few months. It seemed like he'd been here for years. They just fit right on in like a glove. Isn't that nice? Them, t- them the kind of people you want around you. You don't want them people that don't fit like a glove. <laughs> Hallelujah, they make life hell. Uh-oh. And believe it or not, they thinking that you can make their life hell. Now we are in a crossroads now, ain't we? Can you believe that? Now what are we going to do? We got to sit down and do something to resolve this issue, don't we? Glory to the king. All right. Now, when we're dealing with the Holy Spirit, like we are now, and so many people being filled, you know, uh, I, I'm so glad. And wasn't it beautiful to hear that, that Junior got filled with the Holy Spirit? Uh, everybody here, when you mention it, everybody gets excited. Junior people are more excited for you than you are for yourself. It's just a beautiful thing to see what the Most High is doing. Hallelujah. I'm glad that you're able to hear. And when you come here to straightway for God's believe, we don't, it's not only going to be just a gathering of the saints for a preparation or a preparedness meeting and stuff. The main thrust of the whole meeting is always the end time day when we get together on the Shabbat and we have deliverance that evening. Hallelujah. That's why it's called, just like Brother Austin said in South Carolina, gathering of the saints and not gathering of the goats. And we have to put up prerequisites because we don't want no more of them appearances we saw last gots. Now, if you're not a saint, there are plenty of prepper meetings out there that people are holding all across this land. Do not come here if you ain't no saint. I promise you, you are going to receive some embarrassment. We're not asking for much. We're just asking for you to be holy. Is that all right? Is that hard? Just be holy. That's all we're asking. Glory to the king. That's a beautiful thing. All right. But when you deal with people ultimately that's in, the, that's in any, any ministry, you, you're going to ultimately deal with what we call, um, or have you heard this before, time-honored methods. Let me explain. Here, we have a prescribed way that we teach people how to do deliverance because we found it to be effective. If you've never... Um, prayed for anyone and been effective in deliverance, then you have nothing to add. You need to just be quiet and shut up and learn. After you get experience, the Holy Spirit, the Ruah begins to speak with you and gives you uh, more and more um, knowledge in how to handle certain things. Then you can add to it, providing that you are the one that's leading in the ministry. Is that right? So we usually get two or more to maybe pray for a brother or a sister. But when you get people over there that are sitting in mind, this is the way I've always done it. And they won't respect the one that is supposed to be there leading. You can't have two leaders trying to cast out one demon. <laughs> Am I making sense? We're supposed to have some unity. I sit there arguing back and forth who can get the loudest, who's saying the most. That's because people are stuck in this rut called their own personal time honor method. When they get finished, they want you to see, they want you to say, look what I done. That demon left because of me. It's because of what I said. And I got the power. And if it wasn't for me being there, you know, that devil never came out. Because I am so wonderful. If you ever see somebody, without you saying all that, if you ever see anybody look at you with a face like this, you know that that's what they're feeling because that's what you are preaching. (laughs) Hallelujah. Amen. We need to have order in everything we do. Because Yah is a Yah of decency and in order. Is that making sense? Sure it is. All right? So a lot of times you're going to have to lay aside your time honor methods just so that someone can receive the benefit of it. Is that okay? Hallelujah. Have you been in part of assemblies or churches that disagree 
with what is clearly spoken of in the Bible. And it's no, I mean, we're not going to make no mistake about it. You're going to know we're going to talk about tongues. And you know, a lot of people, they totally disagree with it. Now, I ask you a question. Let's just really make this real simple. Is not tongues not spoken about in the Bible? Let me make it clear. Tongues is also a language. It's just not of this earth. It's of heaven. Because it's a language that the spirit gives the utterance. And the spirit is not intellectually endowed. Is that making sense? As a matter of fact, the apostle Saul even goes so far as to say there's the tongue of men and then there's the tongue of angels. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, he even goes on to when he's teaching the church and he says to him, he says, if anybody speaks with an unknown tongue, that means it's just a tongue that you're not familiar with. Huh? He's speaking not unto men. Y'all hearing that? So if somebody's speaking in an unknown tongue, he's not talking to men, but unto Yah. And then he goes on to define it because how be it in the spirit, in the what? In the spirit. Not in the natural, not in the fleshly, but in the spirit, he is speaking mysteries. Now, if you want to understand those mysteries, he, te he teaches you pray that you may understand. I ain't doing too many people doing that, though. Are but we have a lot of people that are critical and have a critical spirit to those of us who decide to obey the Bible. Because Having a baptism of the Holy Spirit is something that man cannot give you. And it's something that you can't just mentally agree with and say, look, I'm part of the kingdom. The reason why we need the evidence or what the Bible calls the baptism in the Holy Spirit. The reason why we need that is simply because the Messiah said we need it. <laughs> Clear enough. And there are many, many references in the scripture that teaches us that we need it. But if you notice, we're, we're living in a time that the book of Revelations tells us that there's not going to be a shortage of people worshiping devils. And you can look around now, especially when your eyes open, you can see demonic activity no matter where you are. In every city, in every country, on a, in every town, in every job you go to. You can even go in church and see demonic activity in churches. In assemblies, all over the place, because we become so accustomed to it and blind to it, we don't even call it demonic activity no more. Because we have not become sensitive to the spirit. Well, the Messiah knew this. He knew that this was going to happen. So he knows that the only way you're going to be sensitive to the spirit, you're going to have to have the same Holy Spirit that he had in order to be sensitive. Then all of a sudden, your eyes... Your discernment is open. And you begin to see things that other people don't see. There are a lot of people that, you ever seen people hiding themselves in hypocrisy? And they think you don't see them, but you can read them and tell them more about themselves. And then when you tell them about themselves, they actually get upset at you. Or some people say, how did you know that? Well, it's not hard. The Bible teaches that we're an open book easily to be read of all men. Isn't that right? Sure we are. So there are people that will take you on the chin because they're religious and they don't want to follow the principles of the teaching of the Bible. But nevertheless, we are obedient Israelites and we're going to do what the Bible says. Now, if you're uncomfortable, realize that that's your flesh that is uncomfortable. It's not the spirit man that yearns and longs after Yah. Now, I'm making sense. Hallelujah. All right. I've already talked about Berea, though, didn't I? But I'm going to read you something about Berea, okay? And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas, listen very closely, by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. Y'all hear that? These were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all, look at this, readiness of mind. You ever see people, they come to assembly and they're eager to hear what the word is saying? All readiness of mind. Huh? Look at this. And search the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. Therefore, many of them believed 
also of honorable women, which were Greeks, and of men, not a few. Meaning not only just a few. Now, Berea was a city of Macedonia. And that was in Greek providences. If you was looking at the map, and you could see, let's say Egypt was right here, Israel's right here, Berea's like way over here, and there's water in between here. All right? So it's like you know that, that the message had already begun to spread, because remember the book of Acts, they said that the apostles went out preaching the word to none but the Jews only. So how did it end up getting up here in Berea? Well, the most high had ended up opening the understanding of Saul and Peter and letting them know that this word has got to get out. That's why you hear me make statements over and over and over again. You know, that's a part of history you need to always understand. You never forget history because you forget history, you, you're going to repeat the same mistakes and not even know you're doing it. But if you do know history, it's, it's, it's a good, good way to be able to see and chart what's getting ready to take place in next because, you know what, there's nothing new under the sun. Nothing new under the sun. All right? So, then he says, but when the Jews of Thessalonica had knowledge that the word of God was preached of Paul at Berea, they came thither also, and look at this, stirred up the people. Ask yourself a question. Here's a man, the apostle of the Most High Yah. He's um, preaching the word, and people are being converted. But then there was a certain people called Jews. They didn't come to hear the word. They come to stir up contention among the people. You think about that today. This, here's a little small ministry here that we teach people that obedience to Yah is first and foremost in your life. You need to be obedient. You need to learn how to be obedient. It's a learned behavior. You need to be obedient first and foremost to him. Not walking out your own ways, his ways. To help you along in this, you need his Holy Spirit. Because he promised, according to the prophets, that he would give you his Holy Spirit that would cause you, compel you to obey his commandments, his laws and his statutes. That sure is nice to have that helper, isn't it? The reason why you can't obey his laws and statutes and commandments today is because you're a void of his spirit. Because his spirit will lead and guide you into all truth, providing you want it. And we teach that there's a sanctification process that we are all now in right now. We are, you know, we're all in the sanctification process. We're all being transformed. We're all being changed. Should be every day. You may not notice it every day, but you don't notice the growth of your child every day either, but yet and still they're growing. Huh? You can look back over a course of six months or a year and say, man, you've grown. Well, what? Hey, they've been growing. You just come to the knowledge of it. They've been growing all this time. <laughs> time. And when you get my age, you don't no longer grow up like this. You go out like this. <laughs> Hallelujah. But the children are still growing. You may not recognize it, but they are. And so should you be when you are born of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Speaking in tongues, no, back to the Jews, there are always going to be some people that's going to be in direct opposition to this word. You know why? Because they're not doing it. And they got to go stir up all the other people who may try to come to this to keep you from doing it. And I make it sense. So we're still dealing with the religious Jews today. And just today, they dress just like we do. Hallelujah. So speaking in tongues is something that you're able to do because you have the Holy Spirit already within you. You just have a lot of barriers that is keeping you. Hallelujah. Every single Israelite has the ability to speak in tongues and receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But you're going to have to trust Yah. See, all your life you've been making a way. All your life you've been in control of your own self and stuff. And, and, and speaking in tongues is one of the ultimate submissions to Yah that there is. And it's just not a one-time thing either. Hallelujah. As you learn wisdom as Israelites, um, you ought to teach the rest of the nations. Now let me say this. If power pops off, that's because we live in Lafayette, Tennessee.
And if you stick by for about 10 minutes, it may come on. If it don't come on in 10 minutes, you're just going to have to wait till uh, we send Brother Jermaine to file and upload it. You can go back to fellowshipping so you can pick your mouth up. Is that right? Power pops off all the time around here, don't it? Hmm? You think that we, we just now got, we just now received power. You know, we, we was at the inception when electric came in, the way our power pops off around here. <laughs> Glory to the king. I wanted to tell y'all that, all right? But as you learn wisdom as Israelites, you ought to teach other nations. Now, speaking in tongues is the language of the Holy Spirit. Speaking in tongues humbles you. And your intellectual pride is not going to mean anything. As modern man, we want to stay in control of everything that we're doing. Isn't that right? Because that's what we've gone accustomed to. Everything's with the mind. Having with our mind right here, right? Now, amen. But you'll never speak until you get to the point to make a sound that the Holy Spirit can actually give you the utterance. And like I said before, the Holy Spirit doesn't speak English or any known languages of this earth. Am I making sense? Hallelujah. The same time came the disciples unto Jesus, who is greatest in the kingdom? Remember, we went over this last time. And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them and said, Verily I say unto you, except you be converted, number one. And your conversion takes place right here. Except you be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Wherefore, uh, whosoever therefore shall humble himself as a little child. So in order to advance in the kingdom, the idea is you must do what? Humble yourself as a little child. The same is great in the kingdom of heaven. Now listen, receiving the Holy Spirit is not a test of your spirituality. You may go places and people might try to show you how spiritual they are, but that's not a test of your spirituality. Hallelujah. The only thing that keeps you from this, see if you ever heard this word before, inhibitions. You ever heard that before? That means there's an inner in, impediment. Right here. That's something that causes you to not actually exercise free activity. It won't allow you to express or function the way that you should. Inhibition is a mental process imposing restraints on your behavior. And the inhibition in this is just happening restraining your tongue. Because no matter what you may have. Now, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they began to speak with other tongues. And they began to speak with other tongues. And they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Y'all hear that? I'll give you an example. We all can form words right now, right? All right, we'll show you something. Okay, now, you've never, many people have never spoken tongues before. Is that right? Many people have never spoken tongues before. All right, come here, Sky. We're going to use Sky as an example of somebody who has never spoken tongues. But what we're going to do is we're going to show you what's taking place because people like demonstrations. We're going to show you what's taking place. All right, Sky, have you ever played drums? Not really, no, sir. So we're going to find out how well she plays on the drums. All right? Get on up there, Sky. Hmm? We're going to show you something. Don't worry about it. Just play them to the best of your ability. All right? Here you go. Get after it, Sky. Let's go. Make a good sound. Get after it. Play them drums. Keep it tuned. Come on, Sky. The whole world watching. Carry a tune, make a tune. Okay, thank you, Sky. As funny as that is, are you following me? That's how it is when somebody who has never spoken in tongues before 
starts. Am I making sense? Brother Mike, you know how to play drums, though, don't you? A little, little bit? Go up and play drums. Carry a tune for us. We're going to show you something, all right? We're going to show you something. Just carry a tune. Play anything that is in your mind. Now, Brother Mike knows how to play the drums a little bit, don't he? Thank you, Brother Mike. But watch this. Do you know before he played those drums, he started just like Sky? Did y'all hear me? Before he played those drums, he started just like Sky. Was it kind of a fearful thing to get up there and play them? It, what, come on up here for a second so you get close to this mic. Are y'all getting this, though? Huh? Was it kind of a fearful thing for you to play those drums? Yes, sir. Why? Did it feel awkward? Yeah. Why? I'm, I'm in front of everybody. Now, this to me sounds so Don't. stupid. Oh! oh so you mean to tell me that's how people would think if you are trying to pray for the Holy Spirit, if you are intellectually and down, you're in front of everybody, and everybody may think you are so stupid. <laughs> Inhibitions. A mental process, a blockage. Hmm? A mental process, a blockage. It ain't that you don't have the ability to do it because you do. Because it's, you don't need to trust in your ability, you need to trust in his. All right, me. It ain't until you grow up in this and you get older that you can end up, hey, checking this out. You can sound like Brother Mike the way he plays, but it's going to take a little what? Practice, isn't it? Amen. Hallelujah. If I tell Sky, Sky, walk like this. Walk like that. She, she can do that. Isn't it? You see how that, that was pretty easy, right? Why? Tell me why. Come on, you ain't finished yet. Get on up here. <laughs> tell me why that was easy for her to mimic like that. You know why? Because she's already familiar with walking. All right, come on, Sky. Now I want you to do this, Sky. All right, come on, Sky, do that. Get it going, honey. Give it all you got to, okay? Keep going. She getting it, isn't she? All right, thank you, honey. Is that not very good? See, she's not familiar with playing the drums. Are you following me? Are you, can y'all see that? Get on with it. She ain't familiar playing the drums. Straighten your face out. Y'all see that though, right? I could tell her to walk. She's familiar with doing that. But when I tell her, here, follow this. Brother Mike could probably be closer to doing that. No doubt about it than she is because she's not familiar with it. Saints, when you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, don't worry about how you're going to sound. If you've never spoken a heavenly language, you're not going to sound like me who's been doing this for over 20 years. Am I making any sense? But at least one thing, you have the baptism and it's overflowing. At least you do have it. Hallelujah. Huh? She, hey, no matter, look, look, look at all the obstacles she was able to overcome. First of all, she was obedient because I told her to get up there. All right? Without even knowing how to play. She, look at all the blocks and the, and that she had. Thank you, honey. All the blocks she had up in front of her. And yet and still, even with all those blocks, she still pressed to go play. Knew she was going to sound horrible. Look at all the inhibitions that was up in front of her. Look at all the impediments that she had to overcome just to even get up there. Same way with speaking in tongues. 
People, all you have to do is get over all these things that are holding you back because you know what? One day, you're going to turn around and you're going to hit that lick and bam! Next thing you know, you know, the Holy Spirit is going to give you the utterance. Y'all hear that? That's why I quoted the scripture, and they began to speak with tongues. Not the tongue they were familiar with. They began to speak with tongues. Believe me, the Holy Spirit will give you the utterance. Well, it's just me. Yeah, it will be as soon as you start talking and yielding yourself to him, but it won't be you for too long. It will be the Spirit that will give you the utterance. So that's why I'm saying you have to get past all this intellectual stuff and all these things that impede you. You know, doubts, unbeliefs. All these things will keep you from doing what you can do. And I promise you, after about a year or so, if she would faithfully practice, I guarantee she could end up playing like Mike. But she has to be faithful. And that faithful is not just saying, I want to play like Mike. She has to actually do like Mike. <laughs> Isn't that all right? Same thing with the Holy Spirit. Y'all's no respect to persons. None whatsoever at all. Tyler, cut on that good talk. Cut on that good talk. You know, everybody loves examples because people can get this. They can understand demonstrations. All right, Tyler, just hit a lick or two. Yeah, that's a tube amp. It's got to warm up. Now, how many of you people have never played a good talk before? Never played a guitar. How many people would, would like to? How many would like to? How many would like to? Sister Ashley would like to. You're next. Get on up here. Are y'all getting what I'm doing? All right. Go ahead, Tyler. Hit, hit a lick. Okay. Now, Tyler can play the guitar, right? Ashley would like to. Come on. Go ahead and hit it, Ashley. <laughs> okay. Y'all get this, right? Did, but did y'all hear my words? Thank you very much. But y'all, did y'all hear my words, though? I said, Tyler knows how. Did he not show us that he know how? Oh, yeah. Ashley would like to. How many of you people would like to speak with tongues? As the Spirit give the utterance. We got a bunch of people here that already know how. Isn't that beautiful? Is that making sense? So if you tell us to speak with tongues, it ain't nothing. And even in us, even though we, we, we know how, even in us who have been speaking for a while, we still, at the very beginning, have to start out not speaking our own words before the Holy Spirit takes over again. Isn't that right, old timers? We still have to start out the same way that when we first received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I can sit up here right now and start going, and right now, that's me giving access to the Holy Spirit, a pathway for him to get on. Let me keep on. That Holy Spirit that is already there, that is already familiar with it, you know what? Here, start giving me the utterance. Am I making sense? Is this making sense? Everybody, see, that's the same way. You know, guess what? Let Ashley keep on being diligent about practicing playing a guitar. She can play just like Tyler. Hallelujah. See what I mean about removing a bunch of these impediments, all these things that come up in front of our heart and our mind? Remember, and they begin to speak with tongues as the Spirit give the utter, as the Spirit give the utterance, as the Spirit give the That means you're going to trust y'all. You're going to trust y'all. I mean, and you know how we are, man. A lot of times, come on, man. We, we like being in control. We don't like, wait a minute now. But the Spirit is the one going to have to give you the utterance. 
But you're going to have to actually make, give access and make a pathway for him to speak. Ashley, she may have liked to play the good talk. It still was her choice and decision because I said, well, get up and go over and play it. She could have still just sit there like it. And never made it over there to even attempt to play it. But the time that as soon as she started playing, listen to this, that's when she received the Holy Spirit. Pastor, she didn't receive no Holy Spirit playing guitar. <laughs> brother, these people are too smart for me, brother. Too I'm, smart for I'm, I'm crawling back in my hole. <laughs> are you following me? So until she obeyed, until she made herself available, are you following me? Now, now she's just already. Now, guess what? At that inception of receiving the Holy Spirit, gaining access, are you following me? It won't, time is going to come and bam, 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 bam. That's the same thing that is happening. We're receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We have to teach it so much. They, they didn't have to teach it back then as much as we do today. We have to teach it. Back then, all they had to do was just went and lay hands on folks and they received it because the inception of the Holy Spirit was there. They, they weren't raised American like we were. If you notice, yeah, have you ever noticed just in the natural how expressive people of Eastern culture are? Yeah. I mean, if they argue, man, they get down. They, I mean, they get facial, man. They, I mean, they get at it. The only time we ever get like it is we have to get peed off mad. Yeah. Then we can express the Eastern, Eastern culture. Oh. Isn't that right? But, hey, even they could even be carrying on a conversation in joy and explaining something. It looks to us, because we're not familiar with the language, it looks like they're mad at each other. But they're just carrying on a good conversation because they're very expressive. And over here in America, we we put forth an illusion that we're in control. When really all we're doing is in, impeding our real true feelings. That's how we do when we are taking our own little sweet time trying to receive the Holy Spirit, too. Hallelujah. See all these impediments that are up in front of us? Listen to what the scripture says right here. Listen to this. Hmm? For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit pray, but my understanding is unfruitful. Notice the key is for if I pray in an unknown tongue. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my what praying? Spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. If you've been watching Sila a lot lately and stuff, you get up in front of her, she'll try to talk to you. I promise you one thing, her mind can understand more than her natural body can form the words. That's right. Oh yeah. She knows exactly what you're saying. Bring Sheila here. Come here, Sheila. Now, what's she going to talk to us or not? I don't know. Come here, honey. Hallelujah. Are you, uh oh, wait a minute. Look, are you doing okay? Hmm? Nope. Do you think that she understands what we're saying, yes or no? Hmm? But can she speak like us? No. She is just now in the inception of starting to form her words. She's trying to communicate. Isn't that something? Her spirit already understands. Her soul does. It, it already understands completely. She know exactly to know this because she hears no more than anything. In the right, honey. She hears no more than anything. Are you hungry? You want some food? Say something. Anything. No, no. I'm, I'm, you want down? Want to go to mama? Say something. No, joke did. Y'all see what's going on? Huh? How many times we pray for people and say, just let, just get, let God give you the utterance, say something. 
and people just sit there. And, well, I want God to do it. Well, he ain't going to do nothing as long as you're sitting there like this. Hmm. But as soon as she opened up her mouth, as soon as you open up your mouth and start, because mind you, her spirit already understands everything we're saying. She knows how to obey. She knows what she's doing right. She knows what she's doing wrong. You can correct her. She'll straighten up just like that, but she does not yet have the ability to form the words. That's the same way it is when you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You have to become a child first. Hallelujah. Okay, bless you, honey. Go to mama. Bye-bye. Go to mama. See you later, honey. <laughs> and probably that's what a lot of us do, too. We, we, we just such of a crying shame. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, Sheila. Now she look, look, look now. Look. That's good. Let me continue on here. What is it then? I will pray. Who's doing the praying? But listen to what it says. I will pray with the Spirit. You hear that? I will pray with the Spirit. There's no way that you can pray with the Spirit unless you do something. You've got to open up your mouth to say something. Hallelujah. And I will pray with the understanding also. Again, I told you, she understands everything we're saying. But she can't form the words yet. You don't know what the Spirit is saying because your understanding is unfruitful. But later on it tells you pray that you may understand. Are you following me? I will sing with the Spirit. Sing with the Spirit. I will sing with the understanding also. You have to understand, Satan is not about to let you receive anything spiritual. He's going to do everything he can to put obstacles up in front of you because he don't want you to walk around thinking that you are close to God. And anytime he can get you, look at, look at his arsenal. Doubt, unbelief, unbelief, huh? confusion. Huh? He don't want you to do that. Uh, then, if it, even if all that doesn't work, what he'll start doing, uh, you ain't good enough. Uh, you're a sinner. You can't stop this. You can't. He'll do anything he can to keep you. You never heard all this communication until you start trying to seek him. You know what he's doing? Putting obstacles up in front of you. Hmm? But you're the ones that's going to have to do the speaking, brothers and sisters. You are. Hallelujah. Listen to the book. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels. Now, wait a minute. We're going to know that. Apostle Paul, we know he could speak multiple languages. Is that right? But here he's saying, though I speak with the tongue of men and of angels. Men and of angels. And have not charity, I am become as a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. Listen to what else he says. He says, I thank my God that I speak with tongues more than ye all. This is the Apostle Saul. He speak with tongues more than everybody. He says, yet in the church, I had rather speak five words with my understanding. Right now, you can put words in your mind that you can understand and you can shake them and form them with your mouth. You can speak them. And that's what he's saying right here. I would rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice, I might teach others also than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. How would this look if I stand up here and say, okay, saints, we're going to give you a, a message on Receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. All right. Are you ready? Everybody got the undivided attention? Good. Did that? Anybody get any edifying out there? Hmm. So if I speak 10,000 words on the tongue, but if I say this, receive ye the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Is that easy enough to understand? Yeah. So I could get up here and speak in all that and say all this. Somebody said, Pastor Dow, that was you saying that and stuff. I told you, just let me just go on just a few more minutes longer and see what happens. Are y'all listening? That's the only thing we're trying to tell you. As the 
Spirit give the utterance, but he must have access. You have to be yielded and surrendered to him. You have to trust him. Because remember what he said in the book of Luke. Oh, I wasn't going to tell y'all. See, that's just the old way of coming out in there. Remember I said I wasn't going to tell y'all? Remember what his promise, what he says. Ask, and I say unto you, ask and it shall be given to you. Y'all hear that? Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened. To everyone that asketh, receiveth. And to him that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knock, it shall be open. This is the Messiah doing the talking here. Then he says, look, if a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If ye then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? All you have to do is ask. Then once you ask, this is the faith part right here. This is where you step out on the water like Peter did. You know, Peter, he could have stayed in the boat. The only thing the Messiah did and said to him was just come. One word, just come. He didn't grab him by the hand, pull him out of the boat, and stick him on the water. He said, come. So you're going to have to surrender and trust the Most High. You already got the promise that if you ask anything of Yah, he'll give it to you. He made a promise you're not going to receive a scorpion, a devil, or a demon. <laughs> you're getting that. Hallelujah. He made that promise to you. Made a promise to you. You may receive today. If not, guess what? Just keep just keep on trying. Keep on pre speaking. Don't let nothing keep you from doing it. And I've, 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 I've met people that receive the Holy Spirit in the shower. I met people working on a car receive the Holy Spirit. I met people that they was washing dishes and receive the Holy Spirit. And boy, let me tell you, when you got it, you ain't going to miss it either. You're going to know. I promise you. Because it will be the Spirit that's giving you the utterance. You know, we had people that were so contentious towards the apostles' teaching, people of other nations. It's true because they wanted to spread the words to none but the Jews only. And so when they got back to Jerusalem, the people began to take them up on it and say, what were you doing? You went in and you sat among Gentiles and you even ate with them. What you, man, you got problems. Well, he began to rehearse the matter, began to talk to them. And this is what he began to say. Let me turn my Bible over there real quick. Are y'all getting any understanding out of this? Because I know I'm speaking to a bunch of people that, you know, some, I know a lot of you don't have it. I do know that. Um, but then there's a, a whole bunch of people out there, they're sitting on the edge of their chairs right now. Wanting it. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. I want y'all to listen to me real close. All right, can y'all hear? And the apostles and brethren, which were in Judea, heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of Yah. And when Peter was come up to Jerusalem, they that were of the circumcision contended with him, saying, you went in to men uncircumcised and did eat with them. But Peter rehearsed the matter from the very beginning and expounded it by order unto them saying I was in the city of Joppa he didn't say I'm Peter you shut up you just have to listen to me I'm the authority here he didn't say that he felt like he owed his brother an explanation what's going on he needed to give them understanding alright I was in the city of Joppa praying and in a trance I saw a vision a certain vessel descending as it had been a great sheep let down from heaven by the four corners and it came even to me. Upon the which, when I had fastened my eyes, I considered and saw four-footed beasts of the earth, wild beasts and creeping things, and fowls of the air. And I heard a voice saying unto me, Arise, Peter, slay and eat. But I said, Not so, Yah, for nothing common or unclean have entered at any time into my mouth. But the voice answered again from heaven, What Yahweh have cleansed, that call not thou common. Y'all hear that? That's a mouthful right there in itself. Because we understood what happened with, with, uh, over in Acts chapter 10. All right? With, with Cornelius, um, the, the man of Italian, 
and Peter being a Hebrew Israelite. All right, we understood exactly what was going on right there. We see that salvation was also made available unto them. So look how Peter spoke. And this was done three times, and they were all drawn up again into heaven, and behold, immediately there were three men already come into the house where I was set, where I was sent from Caesarea unto me. And the Spirit bade me go with them, nothing doubting. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me, and we entered into the man's house. And he showed us how that he had seen an angel in his house, which stood and said unto him, Send men to Joppa, and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter, who shall tell thee words whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved. And as I begin to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them as on us at the beginning. Then remember I the word of the Lord, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. For as much as Yah gave them the like gift, even as he did unto us who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, what was I that I could withstand God? When these, when they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified Yah and said, Then have Yah also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. How did they come to this conclusion? Because they received the Holy Spirit. And only, the whole, and only Yah can give the Holy Spirit. Jesus makes it available. Because of his death, burial, and resurrection, his promise. But the only way that the disciples could determine that Peter's mission was worth anything is it had some substance to it. It wasn't a wasted trip. He went there, and these people, these Gentiles, who was at one time cut outside of the commonwealth of Israel, are now can be part of Israel. And to show that Yah is no respect of persons, the same Holy Spirit that we receive, they got it too. That means Yah has accepted them just like he has accepted us. And what can I do? Am I going to fight against him? I'm not about to fight against him. That's what Peter was basically saying. So yes, Yah has also granted unto the Gentiles repentance unto life. And the way they determine this is because they receive the same Holy Spirit even as we. Why is the book of Acts not spoken about much in assemblies and churches that most of you people still go to still till today? And I keep telling you to get out. The seven-day Adventist is not of the Most High Yah. Come out of her. Isn't that beautiful? So Yah has no respect of persons. You see, this has nothing to do with you receiving a religion, making men or sin. This has him. It's all up to him, giving a spirit to whom he will. And in order for you to receive his spirit, you've got to humble yourself as a little child. Hallelujah. 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 Most of us, we just entirely too grown. Glory to the king. Huh? Look what else he says right here. And it came to pass, while apostles at Corinth, Paul having passed through the upper coast of Ephesus and found certain disciples. Notice, he found certain disciples. I can go across this land and see people that look like disciples because they look different than Americans. You know, disciples dress differently than Americans. Now, make sense? Come up here, honey. Come on up here, Ashley. I'm going to show you something. Come on up here, Brother Doug. Sit up here, Dad, down. See, if, if, I'm, if I'm, I'm passing through Lafayette, they say Lafayette. And I go, I go, whoa, wait a minute. You ever did it before? Y'all out and y'all go, man, them look like some, some Israelites. They look like disciples. You ain't never did that before? You, you be out and you go, man, you see, if you see these people together like this, you would say, man, there must be some believers. Wouldn't you? If she had on pants and Ashley had on booty shorts, would you come up in your mind? And, and even if you saw these two dressed like this, would it come up in your mind to say that these believers? No, there would be an impediment there, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? If they was all dolled out with Jezebel and he got on his cat man do gold chain with showing his peach fuzz on his chest, <laughs> would you, it would enter into your mind that these people are disciples, would it? You just look at them like every other Gentile and just go on your way. 
But if you see people dressing like this, you would think these people know something. These people know something because they look different than everybody else. So Paul, he came, he already could see that disciple. First thing he asked was, hey, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said, man, we have not so much as heard. Where did there be any Holy Ghost? What do you mean you ain't never heard there ain't no such thing as no Holy Ghost? How was you baptized? Well, we were baptized seven days Adventists. <laughs> what? Where you get this mess from? I was baptized Lutheran. I was baptized Methodist. I'm baptized Baptist. Baptist bread, Baptist lead, Baptist died, Baptist everything. Could you imagine what Paul would end up seeing, man? He'd be in confusion. He's seeing disciples, and he's going, what happened? I'm looking at disciples, man. You mean, now let me tell y'all something. John, y'all remember John, right? He baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they, which believe on him, talking about him, that should come out to him, that you should be, you should receive the same baptism. So what happened to you? We belong to the church. You should be believing on Christ Jesus. You remember what John said? They go, yeah, I remember what John said. I remember John said. So automatically when I go out and I see people dressed like this, that's the first thing I ask them. And you don't believe how many people I see dressed like this today and they haven't received the Holy Ghost. And I go, what? You don't even believe your Bible. You don't read it, do you? Where you go to church? And when they start telling me where they go to church, I say, no wonder you ain't got the Holy Spirit. See, these people look like disciples, just like in the book, just like when Paul went through Ephesus. But he didn't say that they were not disciples. And Paul, having passed the other coast of Ephesus, he found certain disciples. And he said to them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe a disciple is somebody who follows Christ? Right now, they look like they follow Christ from all external sources. If you look like a regular American, there's not one person up here in Lafayette I can look at and say they look like disciples of Christ. Not a one of them. But I can see these up here and I go, hey, 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 hey. You folks see the Holy Spirit since you believe? No, we belong to the Baptist church. We don't, ain't never heard nothing like that before. You know, you won't believe the kind of answers you get. Is that right? He ends up going on to say to finish this thing. Look what he says right here. And when they heard this, meaning that John preached the baptism um, of the Holy Spirit that Jesus taught him about, and when he heard this, that he laid his hands on them, and they began to speak with tongues. They were already disciples. It's just that they needed the Holy Spirit. Now, if the Holy Spirit wasn't important, then why is it there? I'll even tell you where this one is. Acts the 19th chapter. Now, how is it that today we become so religious that we don't even need the Holy Spirit now? You never even hear them talked about. We can go to Acts 8. We can go to Acts 2. We can go to Joel. We can go to the Psalms. We can go to the prophets. Prophet Isaiah. We can say, go to the words of Jesus. We go to the words of John. We can go um, over to the Pentecost. We can see what he had to say. We can go to Cornelius. We can go over to the teachings that he gave to the church of Corinth. And it's all over the place. But now we're 2,000 years removed. We don't need it. Who told you that? Who lied to you? Who have bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? And no matter how many times you read it, thank y'all, no matter how many times you read this, it's still going to be there. You can close your Bible, open it up again in the morning, and the words will still be on that page. <laughs> it won't change one bit. What needs to change is this right here. See, again, he had already saw that they were disciples. And his concern was, what church do you belong to? Hmm? He was first order business. He wanted to know, do you have his spirit? That's the way it should be with us. Because if your church hasn't preached and talked to you that you need a baptism of the Holy Spirit, you get this Holy Spirit, Sarah, not a church. Because <laughs> you're going to go back and tell your church what happened. You know what they're going to do, don't you? Either they're going to ostracize you or they're going to tell you how many devils you got and you've been deceived. Uh huh. 
And you're going to read it to them. They're going to close up that book. And pretty soon the demons start manifesting. They even kick you out. You throw the Bible at you. That's just the way it is. This is the type of war that we're in. So the key is, have you received the Holy Spirit then since you believe? He didn't say you didn't believe. Have you received the Holy Spirit since you believe? The only thing he's trying to do is equip you. That's it. We got that scripture up there. You can't see it though. And it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching, there was the Pharisees and doctors and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. And listen to what it says. And the power of Yahshua was present to heal them. Y'all hear that? And his power was present to heal them. His power was present to heal them. Listen to what it says. I am Yahweh thy Elohim, which brought thee out of the land of Mizraim. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. Y'all didn't know that was in the book either, did you? Huh? Told us to make a joyful noise unto the Most High Yah. Hmm? So praying in the Spirit is not praying what you're familiar with intellectually. It's being able to trust the Father. Oh, he will fill you. Some, you know what? It may even take you a week to prepare your heart. It may even take you a week to prepare your heart to receive him. To allow. Now, I ain't got to go over my water demonstration again, do I? Do I got to go over my water demonstration show you what it means to be filled? Okay. All right. Everybody, everybody here, everybody out there going, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody here going, no, 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 no. <laughs> Glory to the king. Are right, you following me? Because we, we know what happened last week, don't we? Um, but we've seen what, it, what would happen, right? It will be a, a well springing up. In the everlasting joy. And believe me, you will receive joy too. When you receive the Holy Spirit. Now you have to understand, there's something, this is the last thing I'm going to cover right here. Quick service today. Everybody out there disappointed already. Quick service day. Sometimes it takes a little bit for your spirit to reach your soul realm. Y'all hear what I said? Sometimes it takes a little bit for your spirit to reach your soul realm. Your soul realm is out of is what expresses emotions. Now I make it sense. So you're gonna have to actually just keep pressing until you receive it. Now, the quickest way to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and believe me, it may take you 10 seconds, it may take you three months, it may take you a month, but you know what you need to do? Keep seeking. Don't give up. Don't stop. Because right, you know how some of, some of us got so much dignity, we dare not to pray in somebody. I mean, we're going to do radical like I did. I went straight up rogue radical. 200 something people in the building. I shouted out every sin I ever known, everything I ever did. And next thing you know, I was up there. It took me a little bit of time to receive the Holy Spirit. But boy, when I did, whoo-wee! I tell you what, it stopped the whole service. I'm telling you, it stopped them cold. And here I was, up in front of all these people with my hands up in their eyes closed, speaking in tongues. And, I, and you can feel it when it's starting to go away. And I'm up there hollering, don't leave me, don't leave me, don't leave me, don't leave me, don't leave me. Then next time I drop my hand, look around, everybody look at me like you people. Look. <laughs> so I guess I left all pride, all dignity, <laughs> all self-control. <laughs> I, left, I, I guess I just threw all that away and threw it all out the window. Wasn't concerned one bit about one person said or thought. Not one bit. See, that is what you call an inhibition. That could, that could happen to some of us. Some of us, we're a little bit prideful. Oh, yeah. And we may not, because it's, it's uncomfortable with me. No, you're uncomfortable because you're out of his will. Yeah. You're in a place where people are not going to be mocking you for trying to receive the Holy Spirit. We have more joy than you would. Hallelujah. Labor harder than you would. But see, this thing about receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit is Jesus said he's going to pray to the Father to send you a comforter. And then he said that he was the one that was going to send. Everybody's laying claim that they have the Messiah, but yet they don't have his spirit. His spirit 
speaking out of their vessel. That's right. You can receive the report of men, or you can receive the report of Yah. Which one is important? Now, that doesn't mean that you're always going to be obedient. We, when you should be obedient. You should practice obedience because your life will be a whole lot better, be a whole lot more peaceful too. But, you know, the one way you want to make sure that you're close to the Father hmm, is speaking tongues. Yeah. I mean. Because every time that you start speaking tongues and his spirit begins to give you the utterance as confirmation, you're in the kingdom still. You know how many times the devil try to weigh you out and make you doubt salvation? No, huh? you ain't worthy, you ain't all this, you ain't all that. You should be finished with that by now. You know why? Because when you wasn't worthy and when you wasn't all that, you didn't hear that. That's right. <laughs> huh? it, it ain't until you started seeking this and stuff, then you start hearing all this. That, what, it, impediment. He got to run block to keep you from it. Because now you, would, you know what's going to happen? You're going to get the audacity to try to run around and cast out devils on people. You're going to get the audacity to try to heal the sick. You wouldn't have done that before unless you had the Holy Spirit because he would give you boldness. You get the Holy Spirit, you don't care what nobody think about. No, you're like, man, uh-uh. Oh, big, bad John Reed. How you doing, brother? Yo, know, brother John Reed, man, you know, Go to bars and fight, man. Let's fight, break knuckles, break knuck, break heads, and all this old other stuff, man. That's manly man, huh? Old brother John a coward when he come to Yah, though, wasn't he? Brother John said, not no more. Not no more. It takes a man to hit his knees. It takes a man to lift up his hands. It takes a man to praise he who is greater than he. Oh, yes, it does, too. So whereas once before, Brother John Reed was running from the spiritual and scared after death, now he's running to it. Hallelujah. You know why? He's done left a child, now he's become a man. Because he's unrecognized who the father is. Isn't that beautiful? Yes, is. Brother and sister, we got a good thing going here that the Holy Spirit is doing with us. If there was a such thing as us uh, being able to be included in the books and stuff, he, he may have had an apostle wrote about the works that we're doing in this day because you ain't going to find too many people that has the balance that we have. And we're still seeking more. I'm not comfortable. You comfortable? You comfortable? I ain't comfortable. I ain't comfortable. Believe me, five more years from now, be the father's will, we're still around, I guarantee we're going to be more holy than what we are today. More righteous, more obedient, and more of a servant to the, to the father than we are today. You know why? Because it's called growing in grace. Growing in knowledge of Yahshua HaMashiach. That's what it's called. It's growing into this. So when people come, I don't get all over them and jump all over them for what they had because I remember that. I remember going into a churches and stuff and the first thing they do, first thing they do, boy, is they want to take you and, and clean you up on the outside and you're dying on the inside just so that you can look the part And you're still tore up on the inside. No, there, there comes a time that you do need to be transformed. Don't sit here five years from now and then we got to come up to you. Sister, don't you know you need to be wearing a skirt by now? Well, I don't know. I ain't never read that before. I know. Say it again. I ain't never read that before. You're supposed to say I ain't never read it before. I ain't never read that before. I know why. Why? Why? You ain't never read it before. <laughs> it's still there. Am I making sense? Don't tell me, don't take all that to be obedient. No, no, it don't. It don't take all that to be obedient. It, it, it comes from the heart. Yeah, it does. And, it, and, it, and it's about who do you love. Because I love the Father, I won't fornicate. Hallelujah. Because I love the Father, I won't bear about false witness. Because I love the Father, I won't steal from you. Now let me really zero it in a little bit. Let me become a sharpshooter, okay? Because I love Yah, I won't have no other L's before him, no other gods before him. Because I love him, hallelujah, I will not worship an idol. Because I love him, I will not take his name in vain. Because I love him, I will guard the Sabbath day. And keep it holy. 
Because I love you, I will not steal. Because I love you, I will not commit adultery. Because I love you, I will not covet. Because I love you, I will not bear false witness. Y'all beginning to get this? I told you we were going to bring it on a sharpshooter level, didn't it? No expert. Because the first four commandments have to do with your love for the Father. And the next six has to do with your love for the fellow, your fellow man. And by these two, hang the whole entire law. That means two tablets. Love. 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 On these two. Hang the whole law and the prophets. Isn't that something? So don't tell me you love your fellow man and you break one of these six. Don't tell me you love Yah and you break one of those four. And don't tell me you love Yah and man when you live practicing breaking one of them. Because <laughs> if you break one, what did James say? You're guilty of what? Breaking them all. So don't boast that you don't commit adultery but you're a liar and you steal. In Yah's eyes, you're guilty of them all. You might as well just broke all of them. You not only spurn Yah but you spurn your fellow brother who you should love. And remember, our love has got to be more than what we're capable of producing of ourselves. We're supposed to love with the same love that the Messiah loved with. And that's a greater love. Huh? That's a love that you have to be willing to lay down your life for your friends. I mean, you look at Brother Mike, man, and it's between me and him, man. Man, let that book die. Uh-oh. Come on. We had a situation going down and stuff, and somebody, let's give a hypothetical situation, somebody pulling a gun up on us, man, and then we know that this guy's going to shoot and stuff. Huh? Which one of us is going to be willing to jump in front of Well, you're going to have to shoot me. Before you shoot him. That's what Christ would have done. That's what Christ would have done. You know what's amazing about this, though? Is as a soldier, being trained by an army, being trained by an army, we could have been in a hostile situation. I could have been in a wartime situation. And if I could have saved one of my buddies by jumping in front of a grenade or in front of an assault to save one of them, I wouldn't have even had a second thought about it because I would have been thinking more about my buddy than myself. I would have gave my life for my buddy, and this is not even doing it for Christ. There are people who are trained in warfare to do that just so that the others may live. Trained to go jump in and just jump on grenades and stuff so your brother can live. Knowing good and well, I got a family at home, got children at home, I got, and will still give their life. That's when you know somebody's love is complete. That's when you know love is complete. Today we wouldn't even think so much about it. You know the reason why we can't think so much about it today? Because over trivial matters we fuss and fight. Things that in the eternal kingdom have no bearing whatsoever at all. We got the internal kingdom sitting in front of us and we fighting over, fighting over stuff. How can the other be edified when they see this foolishness amongst us? Amen. When we receive the Holy Spirit, it's, there, it's the reason why it's called Holy Spirit. It's there to make you holy, right. not unholy. It's there to make you righteous, not unrighteous. We give sound advice around here. If we see anybody that's young, because we done lived this life long enough to know that you don't want to play around with sin. That, that, that sin bites like an adler. I mean, that book is deadly. And you know what's amazing about sin? You never know if you're ever going to get back from it. That's right. It's amazing what comes with one sin. Fear, doubt, uncertainty, unbelief. I mean, all kinds of things you're just inundated with. Why even mess with it and toy around with it when you can walk in obedience and peace? Right. Makes sense, don't it? So you can receive the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And you should be glad to be able to. And you should seek to receive the Holy Spirit. And remember, if you've been in ministries to where they have spoke against you receiving the Holy Spirit, your conscience is already defiled. That means it's hard for you to even walk in this, even to seek this, because they have spent so much time speaking against it. Now you've got a lot to wait through. So this one may, hey, it may take you a little time to receive the Holy Spirit because you've got all this in your subconscious. All this false teaching and false doctrine. 
Y'all get this? You need a ruah. The Most High is not going to dwell in an unclean temple. When you repent it, he came in to your heart. Now he needs, now you need power. You need power. You need power to live holy. You need power to eradicate the devil. You need power to continue. You need power to be a witness. You need power when you lay hands on people. The devil received the Holy Spirit. There was one guy that flat out said he was sitting there watching the apostles. Watching them lay hands on people and watching them receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You know what he did? He tried to purchase the gift of Yah. With regular money, said, "Give me also this power that whosoever I lay hands on, they'll receive the Holy Spirit too." Call him a devil. <laughs> you know what, you fool? What's wrong with you, man? You need to repent of the wickedness of your heart to even think that you could purchase the gift of Yahweh with monetary gain or, or with funds. He he turned around and said, "No, I'll tell you what. How about this? You pray for me." So don't let fear which is your enemy, doubt, your enemy, unbelief, your enemy, keep you from receiving the Holy Spirit. You need to receive it because yesterday is gone. Today we're here. Tomorrow's not promised. Hallelujah. And remember, the ones that are going to depart from him is the ones that work iniquity or the ones who are lawless towards his laws. Do y'all realize how many religions and beliefs there are today that are totally lawless against y'all? They're not interested in obeying him and don't want to obey him. There are people walking in willful disobedience today. Doing it because, you know what, I don't want God. What makes, what makes you think he wants you? The audacity. I've been watching <clears throat> in the last year or two especially the last two years, I've been watching the Most High bringing people in their 20s, same age when I came in, in their 20s, on fire, on fire for the Most High, literally on fire, getting it done, getting it done. See, there's a lot of our brothers and sisters out there, you don't see that they're out there beating the path, beating the road. They're going to people's house, laying hands on them, Casting out devils, healing them of the sick of sickness, um, praying for them to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They're doing this in between all their work. You know why? Because the, the kingdom comes first and foremost to them. They sold out. They are sold out. There are brothers who they, they can't get here, so they're looking online to find out who is close to them to actually get to them. I was talking to Brother Mitchell this morning. There's a sister right down, down there now uh, at, the, at the, the church that is in the house in Houston, Texas. Sitting there listening to the meeting right now, listening to the message right now. Every time we turn around, somebody else. And you know what they all, all of us have in common? Coming out. All of us are coming out. All of us are coming out. All of us are coming out. Brother Mitchell was doing a job in Denver. You know what he did? He turned around and met Sister Diane Martin and her husband up in Denver, Colorado. Little Timothy. Huh? Just, just busy. Just ate up with the father. Literally just ate up with the father. Same people that went down to help that, that, little, that old widow, Mother Thomas. We can't get most of us to even go help anybody because we're too busy. Mind you, if you ain't got time for y'all, don't worry about it. He ain't got time for you. You're going to see either. You're going to see too one day. You ain't got time for him now. He ain't going to have time for you in eternity. So every Shabbat, you should be right here listening to this. You, can, you got all the other that time to do whatever you need to do. What did he tell Peter? If you love me, then feed my sheep. Your sheep. Y'all sheep. At least he didn't call you goats. So we thank the Father for Sky playing drums for us. Did a good job. You ain't no Ringo Starr, but you'll do. Whoever that is. <laughs> huh? But at least she was willing and obedient, didn't she? 
wasn't she? Same thing you have to be with the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit. Let me, let me give y'all, uh, those of you that are in the home churches, because I know y'all. Y'all going to get busy right after this message. <laughs> there are people that as soon as this message is over, they'll get busy. Let me give you a form, a form prayer that I typed out this morning, because we do this a lot even with deliverance, and we're done. Um, that I would suggest, you know, that you would probably pray. All right? And I know that many of you may try to write it down, so I'm going to go a little slow, okay? Father, I claim protection of the blood of Jesus Christ over all of us. Y'all bear with me because they're, they're copying. Remember? And the power of Yahshua was present to heal. What we're doing, every time you pray, you make an environment conducive for the Holy Spirit to operate. I ask you to send sufficient amount of holy angels to stand around us and to drive away any spirit of fear. Doubt, unbelief, or confusion. Holy Spirit, we ask for a Shavuot experience. Here today among your people, or you could say a Pentecost experience. Praise Yahweh. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, you are my baptizer. And your word said that you would baptize me. How many people know what I'm doing? A lot of people don't know. If you don't know the scriptures, you have no idea what I'm doing. I'm actually praying in obedience to the Father, to the word. Actually, the way the word says, do it. Probably the reason why we get results around here too then, huh? Please baptize me in the spirit. Baptize me in the Ruach. I receive and accept the new language you have given me. Help me to release. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Now, what they did, everything is worked by prayer and supplications. Is that not what the word teaches? And what you're doing is you're creating an environment so that the Holy Spirit can work. Now, don't get me wrong, brother, since I know you're here because your heart is right. Your heart is right. It's in the right place. Your flesh may not be right, which it ain't, but your heart is right. <laughs> and it's in the right place. But you're going to have to fight and resist against this wicked flesh that's tried to keep you from doing Yah's will. We have a good family, a, a, a growing family. The family is continuing to keep growing right before our very eyes. And, and, uh, and I'm telling you, there ain't nothing we can do about it because this is his doing. This is his doing. He's the one who's doing this. And we have to make sure that we are in a position to be helpers to our brothers and sisters who are coming in. And be an encouragement to these because these people really, truly love the Father. And the last thing I want, the last thing I want is for people to come this way and have experiences that they had in them churches. Like I said over the broadcast last night, them days are over. When you come here, you done, the buck stops here, as the old saying goes. The buck stops here and it goes on with the Messiah. You're not going to be able to sit and point fingers and lay sin to our charge. Though you may see wicked ways, but like I said last night, let me live with you a couple of months and let's see how many wicked ways I see. <laughs> Hallelujah. But no, we, we're going to continue to keep doing this. I've had people come and boast and brag about who they thought they were and who was this and who was that, where they at now. And here we are still like 
Now, which one is it? The Energizer or the Duracell Bunny? The one that goes boom, boom. The Energizer. Well, here we are still trotting along. Still poking along. You can tell how much TV I watched on. I don't know what. I, how old is that commercial? Is that thing still play? Is that thing still play? I don't watch it. You don't know. You don't know. Brother Mike said, I don't know. So that means now that Brother Mike, huh, in the name of Jesus, I remove all those demons that keep you from playing drums. <laughs> Knowing I want deliverance. Brother Mike can play drums. Uh, no. <laughs> I, I might mess up, so you'll get it one day. Don't worry, the saints won't know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to the King. I hope y'all enjoyed this. I hope y'all got some more direction stuff. And the reason why, brothers and sisters, the days are evil. The enemy has not stopped one bit at, at making people worse than him. I mean, he, people are going to wax worse. Deceived and being deceived. And as we know that, that means we're going to have to get closer to the Father. That's the reason for these teachings. The reason for these teachings is because we're going to need, in order to get closer to the Father, we need His power. We need His power operating in us. I need more. I'm not satisfied. I need more of the Ruah operating in me. More. More. Because I have a few things that I would love to do in His name. That I would love to do in His name. And I guess I do too. And I'm looking forward to it. And when, of course, you know, people, when people come here, there ain't no shortage of ministry, is it? Oh, we busy now, ain't we? We busy. Y'all be encouraged. And thank the Father that you have the mind to even sit and listen and hear. Thank the Father and rejoice that your name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. From this point on, go on to perfection because Satan will use many, many things to hinder you in your walk. Don't pay attention to those that are hindering and those who refuse to go on to perfection Hang around, you know, whoever you hang around is more likely who you're going to be like. You keep bad company, you're going to end up being bad. Is that right? Yeah. Hallelujah. That's right. Lord to the king. Yeah. All right. Hey, Brother Mike, come on up here for a second. Say something to the people. Brother Mike is going to be um, here at Gotts giving some instruction uh, to the people and stuff. And if you're in the North Carolina area, uh-oh. I don't have to play drums. Do no, you got to play drums. <laughs> That's good. Bless y'all. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Uh, that, that nailed it. So uh, I guess next uh, Sabbath on Blog Talk, we're going to have some more reports about uh, people receiving the gift that's already been given. It's already yes, waiting. Uh, you know, the, the package is there. All you have to do is, is come across that obstacle to get there, and, and that, that's been well conveyed. Uh, bless y'all. hope everybody uh, enjoyed Blog Talk last night, uh, and I hope that in fellowship, we come together, you know. Uh, I was blessed in this, in, in this instance that I got to came to today and spend the Sabbath with some of my family and my spiritual family. Uh, travel whatever distance, uh, as is prudent, because we're strengthened, we're encouraged, we're energized, uh, we're filled up. That, please don't fill that cup up. But we're <laughs> filled up. And then we take that cup and we take it out. Uh, and, you know, we're not supposed to hold it and let it grow stale. We're supposed to, to, to give it. You, you cannot outgive. Uh, and you can't run out. So be encouraged. Be about his work. Uh, because when you're doing his work. You're purifying yourself. <laughs> Bless y'all. <laughs> oh hallelujah. Um, we may uh, hear coming up at the God's meeting. And stuff. Before that we're going to talk a little bit more about dispensing the Holy Spirit. Meaning you know the powers within you. And that's the reason for laying on of hands. But unless you actually allow the Holy Spirit to move and use you as a willing vessel, then he can't do his work. Jesus is not going to come do the work no more. He done did his work. That's why he said, okay, I'm giving you my Holy Spirit. Now go do the work. <laughs> Y'all hear that? And only Jesus, this world is going to see, is what they see operating in us. Those of us who have been converted. Anybody ever lived in sin before? I'm the only one, huh? I incriminate myself. Make y'all feel better. Hallelujah. Well, anyway, Father, we thank you for these words of truth. We pray these sins seek deep down in our hearts. In the mighty name of Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. All right. Hey, if you people are, are able to hear this message, you're going to be edified. I want to, I want to go ahead and get some reports now to let me know how that some of you people are doing out there. Uh, y'all be encouraged. Um, Pastor Johnson is talking about coming up here 
uh, maybe next week or week out there, he just wants to come up here so bad. He really does. Y'all going to enjoy it, Pastor Johnson, Sister Betty. Y'all will. Y'all will enjoy them immensely. Is that right, Brother Ed? Is that right, Sister Cindy? They, they, they gonna, they gonna, y'all going to just love them. I'm telling you, just look, I'm, y'all just going to love them. Pastor Johnson plays drums too. That's good. <laughs> Lord to the King. Shabbat Shalom.